the multi-platinum musician and environmentalist, is releasing a live benefit album, Songs for Maui, followed by a sold-out benefit concert in Honolulu on Monday. The Ten Tack album includes songs recorded during his 2012 show in Maui, featuring Hawaii's own Paula Fuga and John Cruz. Jack Johnson joins me now, live from Oahu. Uh, Jack, thank you for, for everybody who's been wanting to do things. Some people have sent help, but this is such a tangible way to help the, the place you love. And how are people yeah, I appreciate benefit? it. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Uh, well, like you said, you know, there's um, after we learned about it, and I just want to start by sending all of my love, all of our friends and family love to um, to the Lahaina community. It's just uh, as everybody's seen the images on the news, it's just been a really hard time for that community. And um, we're a couple islands away, but Hawaii is a really close place. You know, we're all connected and just trying to listen and kind of communicate with the people that are in that community to learn the best ways we can support. The best ways that me and my friends know how to support is to put music out and to try to use the attention that's on us to shine it on things more important. And so we were talking about a live a live show, and then the idea of putting out a live album came about because we thought that would be a good way that year after year after year we could keep bringing in funds to help this community because it's going to be a really long road ahead. It's um, you know there's a lot of rebuilding to be done. Right now it's about feeding people and sheltering, and it's then it's going to be about the rebuild and making sure it's done in the way that that community wants to rebuild. So that's where we're at right now. Well, speaking of rebuilding, some residents say that they've been targeted already with offers to buy their real estate. And many of these people have generational homes. It's the only place they know and love. The governor says he wants to keep the land in the hands of local people. How would it irreversibly change the island culture to lose all of that to outsiders? Yeah, Hawaii has a very complicated history, you know, and it's um, it's it's a place that I think a lot of people who live there maybe already felt a little bit like on the outside of, of, of the community. And so I think during this time, it's really important that we focus on those cultural, the Hawaiian cultural aspects that are there. There's one group that we want to support through this called Hui Ova'a Kaulua. It's a Hawaiian voyaging club. It's a group that's there that has one of the oldest um, existing uh, Hawaiian vessels or Hawaiian sailing canoes in the world, but it burnt during the fires. Uh, one of them survived and then one of one of the canoes burnt. And so rebuilding things like that are going to be so important for the community, making sure to rally around cultural things that, uh, that keep the heart of that community right there. And um, like you said, making sure that families that lost everything have the chance to rebuild because it is unfortunately a time where people come in and see opportunity. A lot of experts, and you've been an environmentalist, of course, so experts are warning they're raising red flags about the long-term environmental impact of the destroyed vegetation, the ash, the toxins in the water. You've been fighting ocean pollution for years. What are you most concerned about environmentally? Uh, there's so many things that, um, that I'm sure we could dig into. I think if I try to focus on the positive and the conversations that are happening, about replanting what was there before the sugarcane industry. You know, all these, all this beautiful um, agroforestry was burnt down years ago to make room for the sugarcane industry. And so replanting ulu, which is breadfruit, uh, will be one of the main ways to, to get the soil back and the aina back to a place that it uh, is flourishing. So I know there's a lot of talks about trying to revegetate with native trees, canoe plants, um, the traditional plants of the place. and trying to do that as much as possible because it's a place that once was known, the name used to reflect that. It used to be known as the shade of the ulu tree um, in the Hawaiian. I, I don't want to mess it up on national TV, but it's, uh, I think it's Kamalu Ulu Olele was the traditional name. It, it sounds good to me, <laughs> but uh, in terms of the actual damage though, is it, is it reversible? in terms of all the, I mean, there's been huge loss in terms of the vegetation. Yeah, with time, I think, but like you said, it's, uh, I mean, that's, we're all, in listening to the community, we're also having to listen to what the experts are saying on, you know, the timeline with that stuff. And it's not my expertise by any means, but I think uh, with time, yes, I think we can definitely heal. It's a resilient community that wants to heal itself. It's just giving the, it's just giving the support, you know, and, and I think that, 
speaking for the land, it would be the same thing, just giving it time and then the community coming together to make sure to uh, to support the soil in a way of just uh, replanting and, and doing that. But yeah, it will be time, like you're mentioning, to wait until that's, could be two years from now, but I think there's a lot of, you know, starting seeds and, and getting the plants ready to go on the ground will take years too. So I think that's part of it. We just have a few seconds, but tell me about the album. Oh, it's 10 songs, John Cruz and Paula Funga, a couple of my best friends. We did a show in 2012. John Cruz, who's on the cover there, he lives on Maui. Paula spends a lot of time there as well. We all love Maui, so came together to put this out.